Hello and welcome guys to another video. Today I want to show you how to use properly a reference track inside Ableton Live. In my case I'm not using reference tracks in the production process because I'm most of the time turning on here the machines and jamming around and play with my synths, creating patterns and sequences and then make a full track out of it. So in the production process I mostly never use uh, any kind of reference tracks but in the mix and mastering process they come very handy because especially when I'm playing the tracks in a club you want to match the levels especially in the bass and, and um, the highs and also the mids all of that are important and uh, you can um, match them very well so you can play your tracks easily in a set the first step you should always do is to find a good reference track. So you should always check for a reference track inside your genre. Try to find a song very similar to yours. And also maybe you know already which song you want to play in your set or your mixes. So you can use these songs, they match really good to your actual sound. I already choose my reference track. Uh, create a new audio channel, drag it all the way up, turn it off. I took the reference track here, it's from Franz Heger category C. Then I wait till the track all load up here. When it's loaded up, as you can see the clip is deactivated, so if I press zero on the keyboard, it's turned on. You can also go here and deactivate it and activate it again in the menu. When it's activated I have to turn down the volume because it's a mastered track and I also have um, some utility going on here in my master so I'm going about minus 8 dB down with the volume that's not distorted and matches more to my song. Then I put it in solo mode because every time I can switch here between my track and the reference track. You can go also here with the key and bind your solo button to your keyboard. So every time you press it, it switches between the reference and your track. Yeah, so um, first things first, we go here with an EQ8. I try to show you everything inside Ableton Live. There are some tools Ableton doesn't have, so Maybe I will go for some plugins, but um, yeah, in the first place, I want to show you how to use everything inside Ableton Live. So, this is the spectrum of the reference track. You can go also here and go external out. then it's not going through the master chain because on the master chain I put another EQ. Which is showing us our I have to turn up the volume here. first place we can see um, here from 1000 to 5000 Hertz as we can see there's a big gap which is filled here in the in the reference track that's because here are missing some drums and some percussion stuff you can use also things like Span, which is a really nice spectrum analyzer for free, you know. So 
So you can see here the gap. We are good in the lows, maybe here on the 100 hertz. We are missing some low end groove, um, but at all, we are really good with our mix. I leave the span here on the master and on the reference track. But I always have the EQ8 also here because what I like to do also on a reference track is to check the special frequencies. Like I go and check the mids, you know, when I want to. Or I want to hear what's going on only in the highs. Or the low end. So yeah, you can go and check King with the EQ8. You can use also an auto filter with band pass mode or something like that. Doesn't matter, but um, I'm using in the most time I'm using the EQ8. And yeah, going through the track and checking some frequencies. You can remix also your stuff and etc. So yeah. This is how I use the reference tracks in the first case with an EQ8 and with a span. So I can always check the frequencies here. I have the hold function. I see all the spectrum of the whole track. And then I can compare it to my own track. Then we come to the next part um, for referencing tracks. When I go with uh, a track, especially in the mixing process, I try to check the span or the um, Ableton Live spectrum. It doesn't matter if you don't have the span, you can use the spectrum. When I hover over the frequency, I can see the loudness here in the corner, as you can see. I can see the loudness, it says minus 38 dB on the high frequencies. And then I can check my own track and go here with my master, turn on the spectrum. Yeah, and as you can see, we are here with minus 50 dBs. So the highs on the reference tracks are more louder than in my mix. So this means that my highs should get louder, you know? So also in the lows and whatever you can here compare with the spectrum, you can compare all the frequencies. With the spectrum, you can compare all the frequencies and going with the loudness and reference your track to your own sound and match the levels of the frequencies because then, as I said, you have a much better mix and much more balanced. Uh, for playing your tracks in a club. Also one thing what I do is uh, when I'm mastering the track I'm doing always most the same time. I turn up the volume here again because um, in the mastering process I want it at full loudness. Go with another plugin. Yeah, um, I'm using for mastering also the Yulin loudness meter on the reference track because I can see very well how loud the song is and I try to match it in the mastering process on my own track because if you go to my not mastered track yet. As you can see we are around minus 11 and the reference track is about minus eight, so yeah. My song should get probably a little bit louder. This happens in the mastering process and also I matching the um, frequencies in the mastering process. So yeah, this is these are the two things I'm using in the reference track. One thing you can do also with a reference track is to, 
I would say inspire, get this inspiration by the arrangement. So you can go and just check, adjust the elements, go to the next block. You can add some hi-hats here, so you can go like this. You can hear here turning on some hi-hats, so you go fifth arrangement and continue like this. So you can literally copy the arrangement or get inspired by the arrangement. So um, I'm doing this sometimes when I have no ideas or want to try something new out, but in the most cases I'm doing the arrangement on my own because like I said, I'm jamming around and turning on some knobs and effects and um, the synth that I have to adjust the arrangement to the synth and not on another track. So yeah, in the most cases I'm doing the arrangement on my own, but sometimes when I need some new ideas or playing around something, I um, check the arrangement of the reference track also. But yeah, you can do it also. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is it for today, guys. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more music production tips. If you have any questions or something, leave it in the comments down below. Also, follow me on Instagram, hit me up, ask me questions if you have some and see you in the next video.